Greetings and welcome back to Legendary uh, Fallen Empires, Legendary Heroes. So we're going to take out these ogres this time, but before we do that, I'd like to get this item over here. It may be useful in the combat. Uh, crates lie beneath a handful of rotting tree limbs. They're coated with... I think we've read that one before. Okay. So let's grab this uh, forgotten goods. Uh, though the enchantment on these robes is faint... They still help the wearer with the arcane. Let's trade that to uh, Ariel and have him equip it, because he is a mage. You have to be a mage to uh, wear these, I believe. Yeah, must be a mage. So that gives him a little bit of defense, spell mastery, and a reduction for casting tactical spells. He's mainly going to be doing my healing. I might actually switch him back to the staff, so his initiative is not so low so that he can heal more often. I don't know. Because having that initiative penalty will kind of suck, but it'd also be nice for him to stand back and be able to shoot. That's going to be a tough call. Now, there's no other city sites in distance over there. Let's get over here. Um, move them up there. Move them up one so they can take that position next turn. Get my town watch into the town. And I'm building a sentinel to send up that way. So we're all set to advance the turn. Um, first thing I'm going to do on this turn is clear out these ogres. So we're going to move up here and attack. I think I'm ready. My attack is lower than theirs. They have good defense, so do I. But I think I can handle this. The cave bear alone is going to make a huge difference. Alright, so... I should have examined them a little better. Let's see if I can click on them to examine them. Alright, the Hergons and the Hergon Sow are going to go before the Ogres. I'll actually get to go twice, but let me check the Ogre real quick. Weakness to magic. All right. And this is the young Ogre. That is the big Ogre. Let's look at the Hergon. Immune to counterattacks. He has a charge attack and knockback. All right, we're going to uh, move right here and cast Burning Hands. And it targets three adjacent tiles if you go to the direct corners. Can I change my camera angle here? No! The number keys correspond here, not to cameras. I just wasted my action casting Guardian Wind. Crapola. All right, let's uh, move over here and hit that ogre. And have the cave bear move up here and work on that ogre. All right. I meant to do Burning Hands, and I did the wrong attack. He dodged. Uh, should I go after the big ogre? I won't do a lot of damage to it. Let's hit this guy. Ooh, that did a lot of damage. Um, let's distance ourselves. And two to five to that guy. 2-5 to, to that guy, 2-5 to, to you. Let's hit this one. It dodged. Alright, Janisk, I'm going to position him... Uh, that thing could still get away and get to that. Let's just hit it. And have the bear try and take out the ogre. did a chunk to it. Uh, I think I should finish off this because it's going next. 
Because he knew he was going to go for him. Ouch. Uh, let's move over and work on the ogre, maybe. What is my attack rating? My attack rating is 11, no matter what I hit it with. All right, Ariel is going to get to go before the Hergon. But I want to try and finish off this Hergon. All right, Ogre is down. I think Ariel is going to cast Wellspring. That'll heal me. That'll heal everybody. He's down 10 hit points. And that was a wise choice, because that probably would have knocked him out. All right, let us hit this thing. The, the bear will be helping us. I'm going to finish off that guy, because he's going next. Oh, it's him that's going next. All right, Bear should finish off this one. All right, so uh, Ariel is a little wounded. That's fine. I did use up one of my resources, but we took out all of the ogres. Now this ogre lair is cleared. Uh, we still have one move. We're going to move, actually we're going to move this one here and settle. And now we're going to cast some spells. We are going to cast Tutelage, which I should have cast before the battle, on the Anusk. We are going to cast Meditation on this town. Now we're earning four extra mana per turn. That's nice. We are going to cast Propaganda on this town. That should be eight extra Gildar from the town. We are going to cast Sovereign's Call on the town to give it a faster growth rate. And we do have another town uh, thing we can use on the town, but it would be like a unit buff. I may put Heart of Fire on this town uh, to give a fire attack to them uh, units, because this unit may turn out a few units I might need to do uh, magic stuff, or I may wait till I get another one for like say food or something like that production magic uh, enchanted hammers would be nice all right now we're going to move into the town unrest is zero here because of lord relias being in here uh we need to add a monument first because our unrest is under control with the, uh, the uh, Lord Relias being in here. A monument, we will put it right here as a tribute to the battle that we just had against the ogres. And then after that... We are going to have a cl uh, go ahead and build a cleric. Actually, we'll build the bell tower first. Bell tower right here next to uh, the town center. And we want to kind of build this way uh, to be able to get the grain in our area. So I need two more buildings this way. 
And then I'm going to need three more buildings this way to have the uh, Crystal Crag in our area. And I'm eventually going to need one, two, three, four buildings that way to get to the Wild Horses. But yeah, that cleared out all but this spot, which is where this other... Um, Arg. Uh, done. Undo that last thing I just did, which was the cleric. Yeah, because we're going to build the cleric there and probably the merchant there. I'm not sure what I'm going to go there. Actually, I may put the merchant over here. I don't know yet. we got to think about things. Uh, but this other pioneer is going to head up this way. And next turn, I should start yet another town over here. And hopefully these two will be able to connect borders fairly quickly. And I might be safer putting an outpost over here for Avalon, since the, the creatures keep moving through here. Um, it would be a safer spot. Of course, if I had the forces to keep fighting things, having an outpost here is good, because outposts... Uh, you can enhance them to improve your defense and attack and stuff in the area. So they're really good to throw an outpost where you're planning on fighting. Alright, so we've gotten the Sentinel here. We are going to send him around this way. To get to that town. We'll settle here. And we can't enchant this place. We'll get the wargs in our area eventually. And we can actually start building this that other way. So let's see. Um, let's put the... Uh, yeah, we can't have a cleric here, unfortunately. But let's put a bell tower right here. And then we'll build a monument there, so the merchant will start going this way. We'll just put it along the coast. And we're going to stay here a little bit till Ariel heals up some. You heal a little faster. Um, right now he needs 7 health when we advance the turn. He should heal up a little bit. Yeah, he got six health. Uh, out wandering around, I think you only get two. In your borders, you might get three or four. In towns, you get six. So Tylan completed the monument. And it, actually, my borders should be one extra with the monuments complete, but it's not going to update for a season. The Sentinel is still on his way. We'll just go ahead and tell him, go to town. It'll take five seasons. Yeah. Borders expanded. Uh, I got the um, Wild Grain and the Crystal Crag in my borders. We would like to offer you tribute. If it pleases you, we would be willing to give you 78 Gildar up front. Okay, now there's a thing about this. They're offering the tribute and giving me annual income, but if I accept this, I get a negative reaction for them that claims that I demanded tribute. So no, I don't need your tribute. Know that you are seen, Lord Relias of Alter. Your cities, your soldiers, Yithril watches them. Your power grows. Know that ours is stronger. You'll forgive me if I am skeptical of the friendship from an empire. Alright, I'm actually pretty strong up here. I'm right under Umber. Uh, Yithril's actually pretty weak, thankfully. 
let's see, let's, uh, Avalon completed its grocer. It's now working on an inn. Oh, I know what I'm going to build here in Thailand. We're going to put the Tower of Knowledge here. And we're going to put it right there, getting us closer, because it counts as two tiles, basically. Getting it closer to the Crystal Crag. All right, now let's go to uh, Foreign Relations. All right, Gildan is friendly with us. Their military is weak. They're impressed by me. Umber, we don't have treaties with. Uh, the Irksen are the first and most numerous of the fallen tribes. There are many who believe that the great migrations of the Irksen tribes in the last millennium, their journey north, their shift in loyalties from Kurgan to Elosa, the Lady Umber, was the single most important factor in the Emperor's downfall. They're paranoid. But they are monster hunters. They're more likely to target monsters rather than ignore them. Now the paranoia is more likely to construct defenses. Uh, they're impressed. They're weak. They're still settling. Yithril. The people of Yithril are those who the armies of mankind called Trogs. A name said to have come from the first of their kind, Durag who slew the last descendant of Ariog in the great battle at Ingar's Plain. The Trogs, or Drog, are warriors. Violence and butchery is to them what milk and honey are to other races. They're very violent. Uh, they love war, negative penalty, only the strong survive. Uh, we don't want any trouble right now, interesting. But yeah, they get a lot of negative penalties and will eventually go to war. They're very warmongery, as it says. Warmonger. They're more likely to research military. And they're more likely to construct military units. Now, population. Um, I don't remember my population, but they've got 182. They've got 202. 182, 178, and 174. All right, we don't have treaties with anybody but Reslin. Yeah, they still just don't like me. And Gildan. So let's go to Umber. I have 186, so they have more population. Uh, let's get a treaty. Let's do a non-aggression pact. And then let's go to uh, Githril and do a non-aggression pact with them. And that should just give us some positive relations between the two for a while. Sentinel is still on the way. I'm going to stay in this town for a bit, keeping the unrest down, because I need this town to really develop. Unrest is up to 5% now. I really need to get these territories contiguous with my capital. Enemies in my territory. Yeah, they're still wandering around. Altarian Guard has been built. Now we're building the pack of hunters. Um, what levels are my towns? Where do I see that? Govern City List. Athica is level 3. Avalon is level 2. Let's actually get the life altar before we get the hunters. And... I guess it does update over time, not just when you reload. Because it is now around the um, uh, life altar construction site here. Hey, you can see the little guys working. Um... I think I want to build another Altarian guard for uh, Athica. 
since it is level three. But we'll do that after the life altar. All right, now that the life altar is about to be complete, there it goes. Up here, it lists what shards you're getting and where you're getting them from. That increases the power of life spells. So we have that. We're now working on another guard. And then we're going to be working on the hunters. The bell tower is complete. We're working on the tower of knowledge. Um, we'll put the cleric right here next to the ogre den. But we're going to put the merchant going north. Um, right here. Yeah, because we can kind of go diagonally. And then I guess we'll be producing wealth. Until we get more buildings. Oh. We do need to go ahead and build the farm. And the crystal crag. And let's actually do the farm. No, we'll, we'll just leave it in that order. We'll do the farm right after we get the merchant for more gold. Um, no, nah, we'll do the farm before. That way we have more food, we'll get more growth, and we can actually level uh, faster. But we'll do the quarry last because we don't really need crystals yet. And we're already earning plenty. Nearby Crystal Crag is within our zone of control. Ah, our borders expanded this way, getting the life altar. And that's something that can be toward the end of our list. But we'll go ahead and get ready to build it. Now, our borders are getting so much closer together. Yeah, now an outpost here would be kind of pointless. It might give me that one, but whoop de do. Learning this skill will allow you to build the study improvement and focus on the research that will keep your kingdom at the forefront of nations. The Strategers of Coriopolis call me mad, yet they spend a thousand lives to maintain their borders, while but an hour's study gives me knowledge to defeat them. The Emperor Morgan. Build a study in every city will greatly boost our research efforts and please your scholars. All right, restoration is fairly cheap. That will give me the workshop, gives me more production. And the garden gives me more food per grain. Trading would be a good one to do. Now, it has a world achievement. And uh, who, if somebody starts building a world achievement, nobody else can attempt to start it. So whoever gets to it first and starts constructing it is going to have it unless the city they're building it in is destroyed um so that it isn't like civilization where you compete for wonders uh and whoever can get it completed first it's whoever starts it first nobody else can try and build it so i would have to race to trading to try and get the merchant cross bazaar gildar is probably going to get it um that would also allow me to upgrade the market and give me trade treaties and roads between my cities. While restoration is nice, I think delaying trading is going to cost me the uh, Merchant Cross Bazaar. So I think I'm going to go for trading. Alright, so Dinara completed its bell tower. It's now working on a merchant. Uh... We can build a monument and a study. We're going to build the monument right here. We'll queue up the study after the uh, merchant is done. But now we need to check our other cities. Uh, Athka's, we need to put a study here. And we're going to put that study right here next to the Tower of Dominion. 
See, we could push our borders a little bit north, I think, if we built up here. No, we've already got a building up that way. Um, push our borders this way some, putting it over here. Yeah, we'll put it behind the Tower of Dominion over there. And you see how it evens out the land a little bit as you do building? Now, we do want that prioritized. Research, we need to push our research. So, before we finish this Altarian Guard. Next city is Avalan. It's working on an inn. But we are going to get a study first. And we will put the study... Why can't I choose where the study goes? Let's try that again. There's the study. We're going to put the study right here near the fountain. Tylan needs a study. I think I'm actually going to put it after the Tower of Knowledge. And the Tower of Knowledge is doing bonus research anyway. So we will wait till it's done to build the study. And of course, Dinara has already got a study queued up, I think. No, I, I'm waiting until the merchant is done. Because I want to try and push to get that in my borders. Is that the merchant? or the? Yeah, that's the merchant. The monument is over this way. Nearby wild wargs is now within our zone of control. Raise this resource. Can I raise? I can get rid of the ogre camp since I can't use it? Yes! I can obliterate the ogre camp since I can't make use of it. Might as well get rid of it. I forgot to prioritize the study over the inn here, damn it. There we go, Tower of Knowledge is completed. This settlement is grown, we're going to make it a conclave. Um, devote this city to research and scholarly pursuits. Conclaves generate more research than other city types and have access to buildings that benefit from essence yields. So that should really boost our research. Yeah, we're down to 15 seasons, and it was originally 50 to get trading. Um, now, Tylan is going to build... the study... The study or the sage? I think we'll build the sage. Let's see, because research right now here at this city is 10. 25% um, would be 2.5. The, st the sage will give me more bonus. We're going to put the sage right up here in the corner. And of course, we want it prioritized. It's next. We'll worry about the cleric after that. Yeah, we'll put the herbalist down here after we complete the cleric. And the study will be the one that heads up north after we complete whatever that building is. Dinara completed its merchant, so we can start on the study. Put it right next to the merchant. And then it looks like we're producing wealth. Oh, I, I hit done instead of build. And that does remind me, Tylan 
will not be producing wealth we will be producing research now I don't need to close that out to do it when I choose one a different one that's continuous it will swap them out there see now it's producing research instead of producing wealth nearby wild horses is now within our zone of control our borders are expanding Athica completed its study so yeah 10 seasons before we complete trading Dinara completed its monument. It's now working on the study. I forgot to prioritize the study. Damn it. I went ahead and got the monument. Um, another altar and guard is built here. Now we're working on the four hunters. And then we will get the crystal quarry. Is there anything else I can build here? No. Alright, so Dinara has expanded its borders to match up with Thailand. If we can get some connection across to Athica and Avalan from them, like I could put an outpost right here to match them all up right now. Um, my non-aggression pact with Gildan has expired. We want to renew that. And they have a lot of value toward it. Yeah, our population has skyrocketed compared to them. And their net income is negative. We're right with Umber. We're above everybody else. I, I like it when Yithril is weak. Because they can't be aggressive uh, uh, towards me. Non-aggression pact with Resolin has expired. We want to renew that. We completed the Sage here. Now we're working on the Cleric down here. Um... Our unrest is zero. We don't really need to prioritize the cleric right now. It does give two fame, but we don't need the unrest as much. I'd rather have the grain, because right now our population is capped. Um, and then the merchant. And then we'll worry about the cleric. But it's been another five years. We're in the spring of 185 AC. Now I have been kind of idle here. Uh, I'm mainly doing it to so that this town can develop with an unrest out, without it being a huge penalty. Because the unrest is getting a little out of control. This town over here has 35%. Um, and of course Avalan has 30%. So I need to be able to reduce my overall um, unrest. That is a Yithril scout. Getting my uh, borders connected would be a great way to do that. Hopefully that will happen fairly shortly. I mean, there's only a few tiles in between these two. Um... When this one becomes a town, in two more population, two turn, two seasons, this one will become a town. Towns automatically get plus one border range, so that may be enough to make all of these contiguous. And it would definitely push my borders over to get the clay, which gets them fairly close to Avalan. If I can keep pushing this way and pushing the borders that way, I should have my empire contiguous. But that will happen in a future episode. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.